Well, do you want me Hi, to this, is, uh, this is Charlie Zeese with Stargate Pyramids and the Pyramid Science Foundation. I'm really uh, excited today to have the opportunity to talk to uh, Jamie Lee. Uh, for those of you who watched my video last week on the new things we were doing this year uh, with Stargate Pyramids and the Foundation, I mentioned a new book that I had just recently found uh, on Amazon uh, dealing with the Tartarian Empire. Uh, for those of you who were watching our videos last year, you know that uh, we did a two or three week study of uh, Tartarian architecture uh, and uh, related it in general terms to um, uh, the Russian pyramids because we had found that geometry and that arc, uh, in the architecture of this ancient empire. But at the time, there was really no document or bo uh, no book that was available uh, in uh, the public domain that really discussed these topics in a comprehensive way. So last week I mentioned to you uh, th that I had just found this new book and uh, I'm really happy to say that um, I, after I got my book on Saturday, I um, emailed Jamie after I'd gotten through about half of it, knew that he was someone I wanted to talk to. So um, I uh, asked Jamie and, and he was gracious enough to, uh, to come on today and to talk to us. So Jamie, uh, thank you for coming. And if you would please introduce uh, yourself to the audience and uh, tell us a little bit about how you got interested in uh, the Tartarian Empire and what made you interested in writing this book. Uh, and, and do you go by Charlie or Charles or? Charlie. Charlie, my, <laughs> my son's middle name is Charlie. My grandfather was Charles, his grandfather was Charles. So very familiar with that name. Um, thank you for having me on, Charlie. I really appreciate you reaching out. This is one of the most incredible stories I think we can get into um, as far as not only the incredible historical narrative, his, I call it her story because it's, it's, it's about the feminine divine. It's about how we all lived in one world peace, how we all communicated with each other, how we had healing energies and, 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 and ways to um, create a higher consciousness. And I'm sure you've learned about the pyramids and Giza and around the world, they're ascension chambers. They're about us raising our consciousness into a higher level of being than what we're seeing today of this, whatever we call our society today of this pandemic and being, being locked down and being treated like animals. Um, this was the complete opposite of history of her story about, um, a benevolent society that was one world that's had basically able to communicate through higher consciousness intuitively they could create through their through their minds they could create a, a physical so the spiritual was coming down through them to to enact in the physical world where us in the physical world we try and we try and bring the spirit into our physical realm instead of the other way around and so they were able to as i understand create these incredible buildings like uh, charles and notre dame and these russian cathedrals how did they build these all in the 15th 16th century i kept asking with horse and buggy doesn't make any sense and then there's a lot of great uh, uh researchers like john levy flat earth british um i don't i don't care for her personally but Mar marcia Rom romolo um, I've done some really good, what my grandfather Charlie called yeoman's work, to bring light to this incredible story about what was here a hundred years ago. I mean, it, it just, I, I had to put it in color, even though it was more expensive, because it really brings out the vividness of, of this, uh, as I titled, the civil, greatest civilization ever to be raised from history. Why, right. didn't we, why didn't we know about this? How come we we're just learning about this now? How come... These stories are just starting to be heard, and and I got to give a lot of credit to this uh, Antonio Antonio Fomenko and his partner Nozovsky. These are Russian scholars. They they were at the Russian Academy of Sciences, the uh, International Higher Education Sciences, Russian Academy of Technical Sciences, Moscow University. Peer reviewed, came out with this I think it was twelve volume book or seven volume book, history, fiction, or science. And so I started, I bought those books, started downloading it, and started reading about this incredible revisionist, her story. And it's about reclaiming our past, uh, the language, the crest, the, uh, the, the universal language, the ancient writings. Um, all of this takes back to, according to Flamenco, 
um, history really began at 1200 AD. 1200 AD is when the written language goes back to. So since 1200 is when the, 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 we're resetting, because this is the Great Reset Part 2, as I'm calling it, because the Great Reset Part 1, possibly, maybe there were some before, is to erase all knowledge of the Tartarians and to, and to make it into something negative, like the Greek mythology has as the Tartars as, as the underworld the dark, you know, so they literally, and I'm talking about the Romanovs, I'm talking about why Russia uh, split St. Petersburg and Moscow were split up. It all started, the Russian Tartarian Empire began, uh, from what I understand, I don't know about the beginnings, but it was there dominating in Russia, all over Russia, most of Northern Europe was Tartarian. That's why you have in the Scots, you have the Tartary, the Tartar uh, plaid. And you see Tartar, remnants of Tartary all over the world. And the cool thing about the United States was, I'm just writing about now, is that we were the center of the, what they called the ancient ones, the Black Moors. The Black Moors are, the, are what they called Africans in this country. Only 10% of Africans in this country actually came across from Africa. The rest were already here. And that's why you're seeing down in South, Africa, South America, down in uh, Tijuana and Chechen Itza and all these pyramids, they have the same form, the same shape, the same dimensions, the same cosmic alignment that all over the world. So there was this one commonality, this one knowledge, building these incredible pyramids and in alignment for consciousness and for bringing down consciousness from the heavens as above, so below. So these were all set in perfect, like you were talking about, Charlie, geometry, sacred geometry, geometry, where they were able to use these, use, use, use the travertine and use the the white, why was it always white? Why, why, why is the uh, outside of the casing of the pyramids uh, white, uh, the travertine? Because they had resonance frequency. And in the king's chambers, all the, the sarcophagus, it was made to have a resonance frequency. And these frequencies were attuned to the heavens, to the higher consciousness. And that's what we're just getting into now. If you look at the motherboard of a chip of a computer and you look at the, the floor of the the, the, the uh, uh, Notre, Notre Dame on the floor, it has the exact same patterns of resonance frequency. So all these churches were ancient times, Tartarians would bring people, I do a chapter here, I can bring this up, on the healing centers. This is what's really cool. All right, so this is from the book on revisionist history and getting into, I mean, this is what they're saying, the Jesuits built this in 1767, this aqueduct of concrete and cement. I don't know if you can see this on your screen yet, but you know, uh, there we go. Now it's good. Yeah, okay. So this is, this is from my book. It's almost 400 pages. I just want to get it all out there. But here we see from around the world, the same picture hieroglyphs. And then we're being told these, these fanatical, unbelievable, because it's unbelievable stories that, that these were all built in 1500s, 1600s, these incredible stories. And here Franco gets into the revisionist history. But what I want to get into was this chapter six uh, healing centers, because this and Star Forts. Well, we can start with Star Forts. Star okay. Forts, um, if you see around the world, and, and, and you know, how many people know about Star Forts? I didn't until I started getting into this. And uh, I knew about them about starting six months ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And here we have them all around the world, all across, everywhere we look. There's these incredible star forts, um, almost 320 of them in the United States alone. These were energy centers. They're always around water. They have, they have uh, gematria frequencies. And then if you put them under um, cymatics, if you put them under vibration, you see the same patterns on cymatics for vibrational sound that you see the star forts of energy. Well, how cool is that? There was definite intention to their design. And sound is vibration in the ether. Vibrations affect, disturb, excite magnetic fields. Different frequencies have different effects on our bodies. Cymatic shows us the geometrical shapes. So these star forts, and I don't know if you know about Emoto and is using the water. And sure. Mentioned in, we see the same exact patterns. Koinky dinky? I don't think so. And here no. you see them from all around. I mean, 91 star forts, not 300. No. Um, so you see these are like, you see the same shape as the Freemasonry and whatnot. Right. Symbolism has intention. Symbolism has design in it, and it has frequency modulating effects. So you can see them around water. They had the star forts. They brought the energy in 
and then and then they were able to heal. I mean, these th this is why we see in the quote Bible that they lived uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. These they, they lived a long time because they were all about healing. Even the Statue of Liberty is an eleven pointed star that Fort Pike, Albert Pike, sits on the head. You were talking about the tetrahedrons and the, and the platonic solids. Where here you sitting sitting on a head headacogram. Uh, literally means peel shells or husks of the tree of knowledge. So they set their intention, and then they what they did, the Romanovs who who took over, they got a whole. As I understand it now, Charlie, I'm still getting information on this, but basically the Romanovs got a hold of the ancient healing technologies, the frequencies, and like anything else, it can be used for good or it could be used for bad. And sure. they took it over and they started using the Wi-Fi that they had back then these cymatic frequencies and used it to control and to own. And that's who we've been under. And that dovetails perfectly with the fallen angels uh, from the 1850s to 1870s coming down here in the 1850s, 1870s. What did we have? We had the Darwin evolution. We had uh, Huxley. We had all these things change. We went from round uh, geocentric earth to, to round ball. We went from, you know, all the public education systems started in the indoctrinations. And so this is when they separated the children from the parents. And this is when they took the Tartarians and they put them in the insane asylums and they took the children and they sold them across the United States on foundling train so they could separate the knowledge. And once you get one generation believing one thing, the next generation assumes it to be true. Okay. So that is kind of a, um, um, a catch all, but this is what they did is classic is, is they took the parents away and then they taught the children, the children, the next generation would teach the children, oh, we went to the moon, we did all this stuff. Well, that's how they got rid of the Tartarian knowledge. And I did a whole <laughs> thing on the uh, history of public education starting in 1910. So when the Rockefellers started their nonprofit organizations and created the nonprofits and then with the nonprofits, they sheltered their wealth and they were able to buy up all the Smithsonian Institute, the Columbia hospitals, the doctors, the whole thing started the whole mass reset of education. So here we can see that these energy star forts with computer aided design, we're seeing <laughs> they already knew. And think about how they built these star forts or how they built these buildings. I mean, think of all the, uh, all the workers you would need, apprentices, the construction workers, supervisors, drywall and stars, pipe fitters, iron, where did they all come from to build all these? It's impossible given the narrative. That, that we've been sold, that these were were, healing, were, were uh, built by uh, back in the 15, 1600. So these healing centers and, and getting into these frequencies, if you turn the right frequencies, you can heal animals. So this is what's really cool about this place in Tiergarten, Germany. Uh, the Berlin Zoo has 1,300, 1,400 species of 20,000 animals on 35 hectares. So that's what, about 80 acres. And mm -hmm. it's really cool because they have this bell right in the middle. You can see this bell right here. Right. And this is the elephant healing center with just for elephants for healing. Notice the still saints, the still the designs are very similar to Angkor Wat and some of this right. Asian civilizations we're seeing there. But this is what I found is really cool. This Karelian tower bell, 68 bells weighing 48 metric tons. Yeah. Coming five and a half fully chromatic octaves. The largest bell weighs 17,200 pounds. And this is for healing animals they erected. How did they build it? How did they erect a, a bell, 17,200 pounds, and, 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 and put it up there? Are you kidding me? <laughs> really highly advanced technology. Sure. And they're saying, sure. oh, it started in 1844, yada, yada. You know, they changed the revisionist history. So here we see, and then I then I started looking at gardens. And I, all the French have their elegant gardens. Why are these gardens so elegant? It's the same thing. You go into gardens and you get healed. They're all based, based on cymatics of healing frequency right. and tonal qualities that you walk around and you get that um in the healing churches and the, the sacred spaces. And you can see the same thing. And then they advertise these in crop circles. Crop circles are nothing more than layers, lasers fired through filters to get what they want. So they can put any design, they can change any molecule. That's how they took down 9-11. All they did was get the molecule frequencies of the metal or the steel, what they wanted to vibrate. They excited at super high tens tensions, and then they can literally just obliterate it. And that's what you saw on 9-11. Same principles being used, same sacred geometry being used. And then we see the cymatics going on in the church windows. 
And colors are vibrations as well. And they use the same somatic patterns in the churches. So the light would come through, it vibrate through these frequencies, the frequencies would vibrate with the floor frequencies, and that would create this harmonic with the geometria that's set up in the building, this incredible healing centers. And then they had these magnificent, look at these organ pipes, Charlie. I mean, these are in San Francisco. Look at how tall the guy is. So you'd walk in there, these buildings, these churches, and you walk out just feeling ecstasy. And then the church got a hold of it and said, oh, it's God talking to you. No, it's creation of man. It's man's higher consciousness creating these beautiful healing centers using sound, vibration, and frequency. Tesla, right? Universe. Frequency, vibration, and energy. That's what they did. And, and we have this knowledge. We just It's been buried from us. And if you look at the, the frequencies being put out at the 528 with the Cephalgio scale, this is the... Right healing frequency at 528 divided by 12 equals 36.666 there's that number but look at these pipe organs How, what, what do you think the kind of construction it would take just for a moment to get all these pipe organs set up to get all the tonal frequencies put together to put it in this massive massive <laughs> buildings like this <laughs> and, then, and then be able to play the sounds throughout the whole uh, uh, the cathedrals I mean, my gosh, just in alone, and those crows creations are incredible. And then we get into the buildings. I mean, oh my gosh, 13th century, they're saying these things were built. How did they get up there? Where did they get the concrete? Where did they mix it at? How did they get the, uh, the, the stones from? Where did they come from? How did they put them together? How did they cut the stone? How did they put them hundreds of feet, dozens of stories up in the air? How did they do the ceiling vaults? How did they get the paint from? I mean, these elegant, incredible designs, and they're all in sacred manner. They all have uh, sacred geometry. And then these we see here, these red and white buildings, these are power centers. This is how mm -hmm. they used to run everything. And when you see these red and white buildings, these, these um, that's right. that, that's their power centers. That's, that was the ancient. And we see the dome, these have copper in them. Mm -hmm. And like out here in California, we have the gold rush, but I didn't realize that copper was hugely mined here too. We even had town, we have towns called Copper City and Copper, Copperopolis. Because there were all these copper mines in California that were mining copper to make these domes for energy centers. And then on top of them were the Wi-Fi. And you can see further on that these, these were connected to, to the ether. And by bringing the ether down and connecting, that's what Tesla did too. He put a Tesla coin on the air and grounded it to Earth. But here's Can you the scroll back up? Could you scroll back up to this, this center picture here? I, I'm going to have this in my book as well. I think this is a cathedral, uh, the, that one okay. in the middle. Uh, okay from uh is that from is that from ukraine i can't remember it could be i i didn't i didn't i could have gone through and, and labeled well, all that's all right but, it, but I, 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 i'm I, not sure either but it's either from russia or ukraine yeah and i was gonna just ask you to comment if you if you have some thoughts on this the the two spires three spires actually in that picture are uh the perfect geometry of the russian pyramids that I that I make and so I have found that it's a it, you know when I do the mathematics and the and the sacred geometry this is really uh, a a phi cubed uh, geometry which seems to have a unique uh, component in nature as I mentioned uh, before we started taping that geometry in an ancient uh, uh, diagram in two dimensions, when you plot it in three, shows that the progression of the platonic solids or forms actually occurs within this precise geometry, which is that geometry of the spire. So I guess what I'm wondering is, if this were an, uh, originally an energy uh, production center or an energy power plant, what would have been the role, or, or can you guess, of, of, of having those spires with that geometry in this, in this structure? Well, one, one is free energy, you know, unlimited free energy. And I get into yeah. it further about inside the buildings, how they use the rebar and they use vents. So let's say I want to trap cold air. Where do I trap cold air? I trap it down in the basement. Where do I want to trap hot air? I trap it up in the roof. So then I yeah. just have to open the vents in the buildings and I got the rebar to resonate. And so I could bring air conditioning up from the bottom and I could okay. bring it down from the top. That's an inner heating, cooling system part of this. The okay. outer system, as I understand it, with copper in the domes, 
and then you have the, the magnetricity going around it. And then further down, I show how the voltage is connected. Let's just go through this a little more because I, I get into that, what you're talking okay. about. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. Because it's, <laughs> it's so much, Charlie. It's just, it's, just, it's just fun to go back over this. I haven't gone through this a little bit. So the white cities is what they were about. The white travertine, the white, the white. That's what Russia was known as the white city. And so you see the exhibitions, these mass exhibitions they put on were the white cities. And again, we see the spires. We see the dome shapes. We see the same features over and over again. Look at these bathhouses they had. Look at how much fun they had. I mean, these cathedrals. Here's another white capital, white dome building because they're bringing energy down. The sun heats it up. The traventine and, and the white limestone, limestone too, vibrates. And in that vibration, it creates a resonant frequency into the dome. And then because of the sacred geometry, it ro rolls around and creates these energy devices. And then they can just store energy all they want. Power at will to go anywhere they want, anytime they want. Look at in Russia, they have the celebrated domes in here, the onion domes. You know, and these are the same kind of imagery we see over and over, not just in Russia, not just in Europe, not just in Africa, not just in Asia, not just in South America. Not, you know, even, even up to Alaska, even down in Australia, same designs worldwide. Mm -hmm. Well, how do they carve into rock? How do they build these buildings straight down into rock? Again, you know, it boggles the mind to think how much we've been lied to, but then it's enlightening and beautiful to think the elegant and supreme designs of these buildings with these minarets. We thought the minarets were there for, oh, you know, so the Islamic can pray five times a day. No, they were energy centers. And here's your five pieces again, Charlie. One, two, three, four, five. So you're mm -hmm. exactly right with the platonic solids and the tetrahedrons that they're creating these energy centers with, with these devices, and then they're bringing the, the ether down um, and connecting with the voltage. And then they were able to literally think about how a laser could carve something up. They could literally take a rock and with their minds create these laser carvings. This, this is where we're heading to again. This is part of the, the, the Kali Yuga, the Yuga cycles of the days of the ancient Greeks, the days of the ancient uh, civilizations like pyramid builders. How did they do this? Well, they did it through mind. They did it be able to hire consciousness, be able to use sound vibration, creating, you know, they said the, the Bible, this is the word. No, before the word was the thought. Before the thought, uh, after the thought was was the, the consciousness to tell yourself to create the vibration in your throat, to create the frequencies, to create the word. So they don't tell us any of that. But look at this one picture here, Charlie. This fascinates me. This is in, um, I think this is in charts. Look at the figurines. They're statues, yeah. they're deities, they were all honored, you know, and then look at the details. All This is all like 50, 80, 100 feet up in the air. Yes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I know. How they put this and why? Why would they design it like this? And this is where our homework is. And that's what I, I really, one of the reasons I came on your show is because you're doing the yeoman's work is understanding the frequency resonance vibrations of these. And once we understand it, we're going to be yeah. able to reclaim our past. We're going to be able to heal ourselves. We're going to be able to take this. Look at look at the stained glass. I mean, I don't know if anybody's worked with stained glass, but this ain't easy. <laughs> you yeah. know, to put it in these patterns, and, and, and it's just amazing how these domes were for resonant frequencies. Imagine it ringing like a bell, and like a bell, as it opens up, it, it resonates even more. So these the domes are like large bells. Ding, 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 <clears throat> as I understand it. And then these mm -hmm. incredible elegant designs that were similar, all, like I said, all over the world, and these grand arches. These arches had another major um, uh, energy center. Again, we're seeing the same kind of onion dome with the, with the tops on them. And I just showed that it's all over the world. Turkey, South America, same exact designs, which proves we are one right. world, proves we we're under similar design. It wasn't the Romans. It wasn't the Gothic. It wasn't the Renaissance. All that, excuse my French, is bullshit. It's all <laughs> our lies, massive lies. Look at the Biltmore, you know, the yes. home of, of, of Anderson Cooper, you know, the Vanderbilts, you know. Yeah, right. They lived in poverty. No, they, they knocked off the Tartarians who lived in elegant, beautiful designs, and they took them over themselves. Right. They put themselves right. in charge over the top of it. The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, those are all their mansions. Um, and again, the impossible engineering, like how do they build these waterways? I didn't realize these waterways were even there until I started doing research all up and down the East Coast. 3,000 miles of waterway in the 1800s, dredged, you know, <laughs> 137, two miles wide. 
and uh, 35 feet deep, completed in 1829. What did they yeah. use to do that? How yeah. did they build all these canals and waterways? Well, the waterways were part of their energy system. So what they did was they built these waterways to feed the star forts. If you look at the waterways, they're all along the star forts too. The Great Wall of China, what was that about? Well, that's when the Tartarians and the Mongols and the, and the um, Genghis Khan, they, they, the Chinese had their emperors and they wanted to re retain their power. And, and Genghis Khan wanted to bring the Tartarians everywhere. So they built this wall. I mean, think about this wall. How could they build this wall? If you're building it for protection, how hard would it be at one point of this massive wall to get 5,500 miles? How, how, how hard would it be to get over one place if you wanted to? So the wall was not so much about uh, keeping people out as it was to divide this area between us and them. And that was between the Great Wall of China went all the way through, but the Tartarians were above and, and the ancient Chinese were below. And then the inner city walls and whatnot. So the whole, the whole China, we don't hear about Asia, we don't hear about their cultures, their, their philosophies and whatnot for a reason because they had all of these things already already marked up and they were able to bring a higher vibration and frequency back. They had 24 locks, 60 bridges. Again, 1633, they built this. No way. <laughs> and then the stones. How did they cut these stones? Lebanon and Baalbek and everything. I mean, look at the people here. Perfectly carved, perfectly cut. We have no machines that could do this today. Right. OK, no machines can lift these pieces up, yet they were able to do this. And look at the intricacy of their carvings. There mm -hmm. was serious intention. And then down in um, down in Easter Island, you know, and, and, and there's and they don't show you that there's bodies below these as well or any of these cuts like these beautiful cuts that are still true today. It just we're, we're on the ascension towards higher consciousness after being dumb and numb down since the dark ages of 500 years ago. And then my, I, these, they say these were water storage devices. This is Bath. I've actually went there in England and you have to go three stories down to get to where they lived. And I always wondered, well, if the Romans lived, you know, back then and all this dirt is piled up, man, we, we, we buried a bunch. Well, now I learned it was the mud flood, right? The right. mud flood, they buried, they used the, they used the energy vibration. They took the geoengineering technology and they created earthquakes. They created floods. They created disasters as well as frequency annihilation. But look at Ang Angar Wat, look at how they drilled down into stone, tens of tens of floors, right. literally into the ground with these intricate designs. This wasn't just for waterways. These were water temples. Water is for healing. Water carries memory of everything, mm -hmm. right? And it's beautiful. It's elegant. It's it's fantastic. How do they how do they cut these stairs? Again, this is <laughs> this is the resonant frequency of a microchip of a chip on a, on, a, on a computer, same designs. And then we have these underground traveling and these pneumatic tubes in Washington and London that they, they didn't tell us about. This is, this is another little secret. They got these underground caverns everywhere across the world. They're like little moles they've drilled down. And again, drilling down through bedrock. How did they drill all the way down tens of stories through bedrock? What technology produced that? How could they build on these stone monuments, these elegant, cathedrals and churches and castles. I mean, it just blows the mind to think, how did they build that, Charlie? Well, how did that's they of course the... <laughs> right? That, exactly right. I mean, they had to have free energy. They had to have technology that we can only dream of at this point. Well, so, but it, it's a, it, the cool thing, it's, a, it's available to us now because we can see. Yeah. We, you know, seeing traveling isn't going to new places and seeing with new eyes. Traveling is seeing the same thing with a new set of eyes. So I'm looking at this thing going, okay, two things. One is, okay, they're up on this middle of this cliff and every drop off is hundreds of feet, like, oh God. So that means there's only one entrance probably from over there. And then they had to build, why right. did they build it way up here? Why did they have this? Now, where did they get their food from? These aren't gardens. These are all cemented in. Where did their food right. come in? Well, it turns out that because of their higher vibrational frequencies, they didn't need to eat. They were breatharians. They lived off of, they didn't need food. They were like plants. They photosynthesized. And again, we're hearing about grounding. We're hearing about eating the sun and all of these different things here. Um, so what I understand is they were, they were um, able to not need food. In fact, a lot of these buildings 
uh, the Tartarian buildings did not have uh, sewer systems, did not have toilets in them. Right. So that's another confirmation as we're putting the story together, it can be revised at any time of what we're learning about this great, the great Tartarians. I mean, look at the libraries. I mean, do we value books today? <laughs> not at all. But no. they had these libraries that I just, I would just love to spend the rest of my life going and looking at these libraries. Sure, that's sure. Because this contains all the knowledge. What's the Vatican got underneath them? All the knowledge. They're right. the holders of all the knowledge. And now we're on the internet and we've lost that knowledge. So it's really critical that people say books. Really critical. All right, so this is your sweet spot, uh, free energy everywhere. Now, it's not electricity, it's magnetricity, because magnetricity is the ether, okay? Magnetite, magnets. How? What's the Earth's core? Magnet. But we don't talk about magnets. Electricity is transfer. Magnetricity mm -hmm. is everywhere. So when I stick a, 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 a copper rod in the ground and stick it up high, I can connect to the ether air, they call it. That's what we're able to do. And so we can take this electricity and we could plug it in anywhere and we could have free energy anywhere we wanted, anywhere in the world. And this is what Tesla did in Wardenclyffe in Jersey. He tapped into these towers. Well, look at the design. There's your dome you know, right. uh, harvesting lightning. And lightning comes from the ground too. This picture over here on the right was pictures I took in paradise when they went there when they literally murdered lack of a better word, tens of thousands of people in paradise, but we saw trees burning from the bottom because they were using underground, ultra low frequencies, okay? They were going underground to hit the houses. They were going underground to torch the trees and trees were burning from the inside. And this, this picture right here of a Tesla tower, this is in Milford, Texas. I actually went there last year. And this is a Tesla device that's actually in use uh, above Waco, below Dallas in Texas where if they turn off our power, this is going to be their power sources, the underground. Okay. So they're going to be able to use ULF. They'll be able to use their Gwen Towers and we'll be shut off. All right. So wireless technology comes in. No, they've had this forever. And this is what I get into is all the Marconi, Marconi. No, that's just, you know, we always see the one guy, Tesla. You always see the one guy, you know, who shot Kennedy? One guy. Who invented, you know, free energy? One guy. No, right. it's all a bunch of lies. So this is just that we had wireless technology way back then. Notice numbers 33. You can see their little symbolism telling you. And then harvesting lightning. Again, it comes from the ground. It comes from the up. And so you can step it up or step it down. You can step a capacitor down or you can step the energy up. And that's the same thing they do with nature. So they can create lightning. They can harvest energy, free energy anywhere. All these nuclear power plants, nuclear doesn't exist. Nuclear energy, no. Hiroshima, Nagasaki should be radiated and just destroyed by now. Chernobyl should be destroyed by now. What happened to Fukushima, folks? All the radiation coming from Fukushima. No, yeah. that's all to tell us lies because these nuke power centers are actually um, uh, um, energy uh, um, um, water vapor machines and they're used to control the weather. And so they release huge amounts of water vapor and then they use the, the golf ball RF our radio frequency devices. You see the, the radio frequency devices. You see the Doppler radar. That's what they use to steer the weather. Once they set, send up the water vapors, they inject it with aluminum and strontium. And the aluminum is reflective so they can steer it. And the strontium combi combines with the cloud condensation nuclei that we've destroyed with our, our, our pollution and our coal ash because we can't make rain anymore. And so this is how they make rain. And, and the nuclear power plants are one way. Geysers here, we got Geyserville, that's another way they do it. So wherever you see these huge plumes of these, what they're called wet surface air coolers, those mm -hmm. are what they're using to make weather. Wow. So okay. That's the sidebar. So they step up, they step down the energy and then they laser induced plasma chambers, channels. That's exactly the same thing we're doing today. And I get through the history of all that went through the lightning antenna and how they attract energy and how they can download energy, secrets of the universe. And here you just see them, look at them. Here's how you do it. Energy comes down. This is the Empire State Building. So we got a huge picture of the Empire State Building with the bullet right. they used to travel in. So these are energy. This is, this is uh, where's this in Taipei, the largest towers in the world. Um, so here we see that they're harvesting energy. It's, it, and then here we see another one right here. You can see it just bringing in that, that remember they talked about the top of these? Here's right. the fires. Here, here's your, your frequencies. And here's they're bringing in the harvesting energy. And just above the surface of the ground, this is the mechanics of it. 
This is the surface of the ground, about two to four feet up. There's a null of atmospheric frequencies that get stronger until you get to nine to 15 feet above the surface and they become uh, very strong. And I encourage everybody that wants to get into this to get it, look up Philip Callahan, because he went right. to England and those those towers in England and whatnot, that, that, that the cement towers, those were energy harvesting centers as well. And if you look over here on this right picture, you can see the same as the left picture. You can see the energy device here and you can see the energy device in use right here. And then all they're doing is connecting a copper rod down to the ground and using these devices to harvest the energy. They've had free energy, Charlie, forever and they charge us and they take it away from us. And here you see pictures of the old day without wires, wireless communication hundreds of years sure. ago. And then here I get into the copper domes about how the dome frequencies work like a speaker and a bell and to transmit the energy um, down to the towers. And then here are the copper domes and how they, they access it. So we're just getting to learn this knowledge. You see all the copper domes and whatnot right. Right? from everywhere. Again, this is, this is the <laughs> patina you know, to harvest energy. Why are there copper domes in all the building? Copper extraction. I get into the whole copper process. And again, this is California. Michigan had the world's greatest copper mines because the United States used to be the capital center of the ancient ones. Did you know that? Did you know that we were the center of the entire world at one point? I did not know that. Yep, the ancient ones out of Utah. I just did a videos on that. The Washita's, who were the Black Moors. And so that's why you have Zionist in Utah. You have the Great Salt Lake up until 100 years ago. The Great Salt Lake was real, and it was really salty. That's why they called it the Great Salt Lake, because it was an ocean. And California was an island up until the 1820s, until the great floods and the great um, events that I get into a little later um, destroyed it all. And, and they used copper and all these copper mines. But the United States was the center of the Western I don't like to use the word empire, but uh, civilized nations of the Tartarians. San Francisco, the Louisiana Purchase was really about the really about the owners of the the Washita's. That's why they use their name Washington. They just they bury all the names with putting the names on top. They bury all the healing centers by putting the churches on top. That's what they do. They cover up on top of what used to be. So that's why uncovering, discovering whatnot. So here's Copperopolis, 1860. So remember the 49ers, they came over and covered wagon sure. in 1849. Mm -hmm. The 49ers were named after the gold rush. And by 1860, they had all these copper mines. Well, why would you have in 1860, these massive copper mines? Now, granted, they had to go all the way around the Cape Horn. They had to sail all the way around because they couldn't get over the Sierras. They couldn't get across the Great Salt Lake. They had to come by ship. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it makes no sense. Right. They were already here. And here we see, again, Empire State Building. You walk into the lobby, and here it's showing you the That's energy right. center. It's showing you, hey, we're harvesting energy. Here's what we're doing. It's coming right from the top of here, and here's these buildings. And I show the world's tallest buildings, and then I show, you know, all these same, again, designs. But just really to bring home the point that <laughs> we had this free energy. Here's, here's Callahan's work with these um, Druid Towers in England. And the Druids right. seeded the Egyptians and went from west to east. That's the other thing, the revisionist history. We didn't go east to west with knowledge. We went west to east. The Black Moors, the Washita's, they were taken over to England for slavery, not the other way around. Everything's bass backwards. So here in the Towers of England, the Rand Towers, I highly encourage everyone to get into this because it shows that here's your energy production, right? Here's, here's the towers, which had... Um, Powerful amplifiers, alpha brain wave region. So alpha is our thinking brain, our thinking state. And then you had the 3000 Hertz and electrical induction. And in these towers, Charlie, what they do is they fill them with dirt and magnets. And they were able to create dipoles from the earth, from the conscious, uh, consciousness of the ether energy and the consciousness of the ground energy. You can see the North Pole, South Pole and creating these dipoles. And then these, these windows and whatnot, all they do is fill them with dirt. And they create higher zones of frequency, different frequencies by adding dirt to the to the bases, and that's why those windows were there so they could add more. And so add more. Create, okay. Huh? Sure, and that would make perfect sense. Sure. Yeah, so here's your resonant cap, ca cavity. Here's your tuning pile, and they're basically just tuning forks. And then you mm -hmm. adjust the frequency because you knew which frequencies you wanted to affect whatever change you were affecting, whether it be mentally, spiritually, or physically. 
And Got again, it. we see these all over the world. Started looking into them, and here, here's in Russia, the white, they're all in white. Right, right. Again, wouldn't it be something to be able to get back to these power stations and get these tuned back on again, get these coils turned up again, get free energy? Can you imagine a world if we had free energy? Would we need wars? Would we need countries? Would we need flags? Would we need government? Right. No, as long as it was used for benevolence. But this is the lesson we have to learn. Here you go. This is your sweet spot. So again, the pyramids, why are they all laid out the same? Why do they have the same structures? Why are they same along the same ley lines and energy lines around the world? Because they mm -hmm. had the same intention. Limestone, casing stones fit together perfectly. And again, we see the healing energy. We see the concentration, the lightning going down and through the top. If this, is a, this is a really cool book. It's hard to find now. I don't know if it's on PDF, but Seeds of Knowledge, Stone of Plenty. These guys did great work, and I can't find – it's hard to find the book, but they talked about over the pyramids. I don't know if you have this book or not. No, I don't. talks about over the pyramids are all over ancient waterways because they use the mm -hmm. ionization of the ground water to grow seeds and then create the pyramids that use heightened seeds. This is how they grew superfood. So this is why I'm thinking they didn't need much food. They grew superfood, and you, you know, all your healing was able to take a seed or two, and they were able to live. And so most of the – I'll see if I can find a PDF for you on this too – because most okay. of the ancient technology of the pyramids are built over these ancient waterways because of the ionization, they do a whole investigational process of, of discovery of this and why all the, do you know there's more mounds and more ancient mounds in the United States than in Egypt or Russia or anywhere else in the world? And they're older than any of the other mounds? I remember that, I believe, from your book, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, just learning, I'm just doing a whole thing on that now. My next thing on the Washita's is the mound builders. They're everywhere. And they're all over these waterways because they were harnessing the electromagnetic or magnetricity energy of the world. Right. You know, the lost worlds. Why do they have all these deities they gave homage to? Because they respected nature. They had reverence. And again, here you see at the top, the energy fields going out from these towers right. on these designs. You know, so they could create the frequency to bring it in. They could create the frequency to put it out. And then here we see all the pyramids. The same kind of locations, the same kind of shapes, the same kind of designs. I mean, mm -hmm. just in it, just in Mexico alone. And we're not told about these structures. We're not told why all these structures were destroyed or why they were built or what they were used for. You right. know? And that you're keeping that alive is important. You know, in China alone, 200 pyramids of different forms and shapes because yep. they're creating different energy centers. And then the I just worked. Huh? I was just going to say, I learned just this last week where the term pagan came from. Um, if you go to Mir Mirinbar, uh, the, there's a city, Bagan, and it used to be pagan. And that's the home for all of these beautiful uh, temples with this geometry, you know, at the top of them, which I know were energy uh, centers at, at one point in time. And that uh, information traveled from, uh, obviously, from Asia to the Middle East and then became part of the Christian lexicon and became vilified. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, just again, we're, we're, we're at the precipice of rewriting, well, however long time period you want to get into, hundreds yeah. and hundreds, if not thousands of years of history with this stuff. I mean, we are literally at the cusp of rewriting history just with so many different subjects, but this to me is the most fascinating. So this is kind of like just a synopsis short of how this kinetic energy works. Um, a magnetically oscillating current and you create a second possessing the same frequency, the wireless transmission can pass through solid materials and through long distances. Right. Magnetism, magnetricity. So here we have the obelisk. These were energy centers as well. And so these were conducting, these are conducting, and then they put them around the Vesica Pisces. So this is the male principle. But again, how do they erect 323 tons, 110 tons? I mean, give me a break. Oh, they moved them from Europe over. And it, this is another thing I found. I'm doing another piece on this today. So here's the pyramids in the Grand Canyon. Did you know about this before the book? I didn't. I did not. No, but not no. until last weekend. <laughs> yeah. And so here we have, there's a great site, dailyoddsandends.wordpress.com. But here we see that the Temple of Isis is in Egypt. I mean, Grand Canyon, how is it created? How much water was there? You know, Grand Canyon is right above the Great Salt Lake. So it makes sense. The Grand Canyon, the Colorado River, the Grand Canyon flooded out. When California was an island, and then it became not an island anymore, it was we, ru ruled by Queen Caliphia, and Queen Caliphia used griffins 
and she failed to fed the griffins male flesh to keep the males who were trying to take over off her island. <laughs> um, anyway, so this gets into the whole uh, uh, Arizona, the Grand Canyon. You have Kincaid's Cave, and in there you have Buddha statues carved in. Look at how big those statues are in Grand Canyon. There's limits in, 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 in the Grand Canyon that are off limits, just like Antarctica has been off limits since right. 1958. Right. You can't go there. Why can't you go there? Because they don't want you learning that the original zone, the original creation is older than Egypt itself. And right. the patterns are the same. The same layouts in the Grand Canyon are the same layouts we see in Cheops and back in Egypt as well. I mean, this is in Arizona and you can't go there. Yeah. Then they had the energy devices. This is where we get in. Think about a cycle, a circle. Think about Tamatias and the Greek writings and we can't read and understand what they even wrote about back then. Well, we're just on the ascension towards rediscovering, relearning. And they had these things called these Dorje devices. And this is when you see the uh, Tibetans and these ancients holding these devices. These were all powerful energy devices, just in a scepter. This is what they could have used to destroy all of uh, Tartarian, just this one piece in itself. Zor mm -hmm. had one, Zeus had one, the ancients all had one. And these are these energy devices that were literally held in your hand. And when you had the power, they, 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 they call it the spear of Longinus when Christ uh, was stabbed by Longinus and the blood sped into the earth and the spear was held in Austria and that um, that Himmler got a hold of it and that's how he was able to run Nazis and then Patton got a hold of it. So this is this is these devices that have these energy devices that you held in your hand and once you had one of these scepters you were all rulers. But the thing about the Tartarians is they could do evil. They could do wrong. They could do uh, terrible things with all this technology, but they chose good. They all chose to be benevolent. They all chose to be kind. They all chose to treat each other equally. The women ruled and the men enforced. It was all sacred, feminine, divine, nurture, nature. One of the only rules they had, Charlie, as I understand it, the Tartarians was what you take from nature, you give back more. Right. Okay. Think about what the world would look like if we had free energy and our motto was what you take from nature, you give back more. Get back more, sure. sure. It would be it would be the do no harm. That's right. right. That's but right. an ultimate reverence for Mother Nature, who gives us all life, and we never pause for a moment to think, "Oh, thank you for that food, you were warm, or sun coming up." We don't think that way because we don't rever nature, and we have to get back to that. So here's the flying machines. These are really cool. So look, there's the Empire State Building. Look at how they docked. They'd come yeah. up the Empire State Building. They'd load up here, and then they tap into the energy to fill the ship back up, and they all mm -hmm. fly around in these airships. Here's one docked in the Empire State Building, and they could right. go anywhere they wanted. And it was free energy. They just they just hook up to another building, and boom, they just get more energy. Easy peasy, simple. And they could sail anywhere they wanted because what's, what's water is conductive. So all they did was found out how to conduct the water into the energy of the ether of the earth, and they could sail anywhere they wanted. How fun would that be? Look at the boats they used to have. Yep. And then um, the electric railways, they had railways above water going anywhere they wanted, anytime they wanted. I mean, incredible traveling devices, these flying machines, the Vimana flying machines. This talk, mm -hmm. the Vedics talk about this, the ancient Zohar and the old, the old books talk about the, the flying carpets and whatnot. Oh, well, yeah, it was real. They were able to do that. Again, right. here's your energy devices. Doesn't that look like the TR3B, you know, this, this, this old Vimana device? Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. they, have, they have ultimate power. They're... they're military and then we see in the egyptian hieroglyphs they see the helicopters and whatnot and the planes sure. you know and then they had this is what i learned about the scenario aero club in california in 1852 they had airships so 1849 they came on horse and buggy and they discovered gold by 1852 they had airships in sacramento <laughs> i actually have this book um over 1200 newspaper articles talking about them having these hundreds of sightings of thousands of witnesses of these airships in 1858 in Sacramento. No, our history's been lied to. How about compressed air? Free energy, compressed air, right? Boom, mm -hmm. they had trains running on compressed air everywhere. Look at these things. They, they have pictures of them all over the place running on these compressed air machines. And all you do is add a little more air, just like you would to fill up your tires. Boom, bada bing. I could go anywhere I wanted because the rail lines were already there. And then the compressed air. How many people know there were cars for sale that were selling for a thousand bucks, five passenger, seven passenger, 2000, safest car in the world, simplest, lightest, fastest, best hill climber, easiest operated, most scientifically designed, 
most luxurious at any price, $1,000, 1895 You can get a pneumatic tube, operating car, and look like this. Compressed air, anywhere you want. <laughs> and now we got fossil fuels. You know, how many dinosaurs really died right. to give us the fossil fuels of billions and billions of gallons a year? All those dinosaurs that died 80 million years ago and got compressed with heat, made liquefaction, and we stick the drill <laughs> down in the ground, and we bring them up, and we sell you oil, and that runs your cars. Oh, my God. Show me a dinosaur. Dinosaur means terrible lizard. The word was created in 1848 by the National Academy of Sciences in Britain. They made up the word dinosaur. Before that, Egyptian pyramids, did they find dinosaurs when they excavated the 13 egg? No. Did they find dinosaurs anywhere else before 1850? No. No. Well, we found them in 1848 when all the history was revised. 1850 right. to 1870 is when everything's story got changed. So here we have these incredible automobiles still available. Here's the blueprints. Here's the plans. Anybody can make these compressed air. And these cathodes and cathedrals, like I was talking about earlier, how they, they didn't need logs. I mean, these are andirons. These were frequency modulators where you just open up a room and you tap into the heat of the rebarbs or you tap into the cooling from the basement. And, and it was very elegant and it was very simpler, but they're using this piezoelectronics and piezoelectronics is what jet engines fly on. Jet engines don't fly on fuel. They fly on the jet engine creating piezoelectronics, which is 90% of the thrust power of a plane. Just the same thing. You, they put a little helium in the wings They use the piezoelectronics in the, in the, in the, in the jet engines. They don't use fuel. They don't use jet fuel. They use it to start it, but that's it. All another huge line. Smoke-free home heating. That's why they didn't have, you know, then everything gets burned by fires. But these andires, these great rooms are able to heat because they're heating the walls. They're heating the floors. They're not heating through one area. I mean, think about our home designs. How stupid is it that we set our central heating at the center of the house, yet we run the, we run the ducts as far away from the central heating as we can, and then we put it under windows to take the energy away so it, not, it doesn't heat the house. It's the stupidest design in the world. Why don't you put them right in the center and put the heat at the center where all the power of the heat is? Why do you put them under the windows? Another, yeah. again, to use up energy, to cost more, so you spend more, all to get us <laughs> into the society. So anyway, so that's, that's how they heated up all these huge cathedrals. And then we see gas lights everywhere. Where did they get the gas? How could they run gas lamps everywhere? How did they run all this stuff all over the place? And these elegant, beautiful designs that are still around today. These are all lights that were back then, 100, 150 years ago, running on gas. They were all lit up. And then we have robots back in 1883. And, you know, again, the technology was, they had fights. They had boxing matches. Um, and so, again, again, things that we're not told, shared with giants. How many giants were here? Oh, yeah. Look at Smithsonian admits to destruction of thousands of skeletons who found it funded the Smithsonian, the Rockefellers. So here you can see just a connection between the cover-ups of the ancients who were giants. Some of them were giants. Many of them were giants. And look in the United States, Charlie, how many giants there oh, found. Yeah. I mean, all over. And look, notice this Midwest. Here's the Mississippi, which I'll get into a little bit. Notice right. that swath coming through there because this is where there was a great barrier, Okay. And then the okay. Great Salt Lake was the other one. And then California being the island was the other one. But these right. giants were found up to, what is it, 40, 40 feet tall? Mm. As okay. tall as that. And, there, you know, remember when we, went to, when we invaded Iraq over lies and killed 2 million people for the lies? But there were giants yes. there. You know, there were giants there. We have pictures of them. That was just recently. And then we have the legends. And all over the, uh, like the map you and I have, you look in the map, it shows the giant gigantes down in South America. They had a town, a whole area called Gigante. And then the door went, how big were these people? They had to walk through these doors. Oh, huge. Yeah. I mean, it's not just one area. It's not just one country. It's not just one continent. It's everywhere. Had That's these right. incredible massive doors. This is from uh, in front of the uh, National Library of Congress. I mean, they, they were here. There. Look at the books they had. Yeah. And the yeah. guns they had, you know, hatchets. Can you imagine trying to chop somebody's heads off with that thing? And then we were fossilized at possibly at one point where they used the uh, volcanic ash. They used uh, these events to literally freeze fry people or animals, these giant animals in place. Could these have been pets of the giants? 
I mean, it makes you wonder what the world could have looked like back then, right? Absolutely. You know, when these animals... I looked at these pictures and I was absolutely amazed. Me too. Me <laughs> too. And just that they have these... You know, you see one, you go, oh, that's coincidence. But you see them all around the world and you can see the shapes and the faces. You go, well, that's right. maybe it's not so much coincidence. And then the Russia, where a lot of this emanates from in the history, science, and fiction, I get into the whole history of the white, um, white Russia and their incredible buildings. Um, and, and, and these uh, seven sisters, they're called the Stalin high rises. And remember Stalin and, and Lenin, they were just puppeteers for the Jesuits. The, the whole Bolshevik revolution was to get rid of the Tartarians. We talk about the the Holocaust of 6 million people now being revised to 1 million people, but we all talk about 6 million people. Well, <laughs> excuse me, but 40 to 50 million Russians were purged at that same time. And we don't give them boo. We don't talk about how 40 to 50 million were starved to death. We don't talk about how FDR put in trains for the, for the Homodor 5 million people after Germany that fled Russia down to Germany that were put in slave labor in Germany and returned to Stalin and killed about that. We don't talk about any of that because we don't want to be know about the Tartarians. We don't want to learn about these incredible um, people who lived in a benevolent world, all in white, Tartistan, Russia's most ancient city. This could right. be where it all began back then on the Volga. Right. And then burning it all down. You read on history and the great fires of everything. They torch it all. Once they get done, they torch it all down. Oh, we built these incredible systems and then we torched them all down. And then the railway system. What, what year do you think this was? 1890, they had this railway system? Yeah. Okay, look at California. Remember the 1849s? And I harp on this because it's the easiest to prove wrong. Look at the right. elaborate rail system by 1890. And remember, the car was not invented in mass production until 1906, 1910. Henry Ford did not begin mass production until 1910, 1915. So all this is horse and buggy or by, you know, bringing the, bringing the steam engines over, bringing the iron railways, bringing the rivets, bringing the workers, clearing the lands, building the bridges. All of this by 1890. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah. Guys, nothing but freaking. Look at these. How did they get these steam engines over there in 1849? I mean, <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make any sense. 55,000 arrived by overseas. You know, so what caused them to come to California from all over? And here, here's, I'm, I'm showing how they built, here's how you build a railroad to get over the Sierras. You'd have to build these land mounds. You'd have to level them up. You'd have to buck the trees. You'd have to put the trees down. You'd have to lay, out, lay the iron. You'd have to, you'd have to lay the railway. You'd have to lay the rivets in, you'd have, you know, and then you'd have to bring the steam engines in. Then you'd have to lay them on the tracks and you'd have to get the wood to run the steam. Oh, are you kidding me? By 1855, they were crossing the Sierras with this kind of stuff? Right. It, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And then through the Sierras, if you ever been through Sierra Nevadas, they literally had to cut through rock. Mm -hmm. They literally had to cut through rock. And this is where they said, oh, Chinese came over and they had black powder and that helped us. No. Eight, one foot per day. And then, right. they, then, they had, then I get through the snowstorms. You know, five, 57 feet of snow and they were still able to build these through here. Come on, guys. What story are you going to hold on to? First trains, 1804, and I get through the whole history of the railway station. That proves that they were already here well before. And then look at this. This isn't Budapest. This is a railway station, Charlie, 1877. Yeah. yeah this is a yeah. railway station in eight, first constructed in 1846. Right. I mean, to to right. run what? How big a railway station to run what? Right. Right? <laughs> this is another railway station. This is in... Um, Midland Grand Hotel somewhere in the system. That's Budapest, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Belgium. So this is the Netherlands. So this is another place. I mean, again, how did they build these? Why did they build these? And then, you know, the first, here's the first stone being laid when they finally connected the railways together, the golden spike, yada, yada. Um, but again, look at these terminals. Yeah, you I know. know. Look at the where the, these, this is Pennsylvania. This is by you. This is the, the that's the, that's the New York terminal, which has been terminal. torn down. Or you know. it was called the Pennsylvania Railway because Pennsylvania was created before Washington D.C. Right. And, and New York. Because that was the that was right. when the, that was when the, I think the one down below on the right is the one from Philadelphia. Yeah, there. Oh, it is. there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Broad Street uh, Station. Yeah. What what you know? You go into you go into Grand Central Station. You get idea what used to be there. But look at how luxurious this is. Some of these are um, Rockefeller's trains and stuff. 
but look at how they traveled in the elegant design. I know. This I was, know. this was, they had fun. And then mail orders. I mean, this was incredible. I've got these books. You can order them too. 1895, remember Montgomery Ward's catalog and Sears catalogs. These catalogs right. is how you got everything. And they were yep. all shipped by rail. I mean, you got your boots, you got your guns, you got your clothes, you got everything. Clocks. Look at how elegant design yes. all these were. Well, this was not just settling the West and taking out the savages so the Western Europeans can come over and take it over. No. And then look at design. Again, all the United States capitals, all the dates they're constructed, 1790s to 1915, okay, 30 of them. So by 1932, 35 of the 50 state capitals were constructed, and they all look the same. Yeah, they do. <laughs> How do they all look the same? Because they're all built by the same. Look at George Washington. First, they say his headstone, Freemason. Freemason, that's first. right. But first, he's Freemason. And then who sits on top of the Capitol building is Persephone. This is why they're destroying Washington, D.C. This is what all this nonsense is about, to destroy Washington, D.C., they created Washington, D.C. February 21st, 1871 to destroy her and sitting on top is Persephone or Isis. And this is the male Jesuit principle to create, to destroy. They created Washington, D.C. to destroy her. And the two states on each side of Washington, D.C. are Virginia and Maryland, the Virgin Mary. And the birthing was Washington, D.C. So because the male sperm doesn't die during a man's lifetime and a woman at menopause loses life, principle bearing principles the jesuits the men in black say we are the creators of life and we're going to create women and destroy them because we're the eternals that's their logic totally destroying the feminine divine oh the women ate the apple and ruined for everybody oh the woman came out of adam's rib the word female comes from paying for a fee for the male you would pay for her that's why they call her a fee male that's what you know per son we totally debase feminine divine and it's time to bring back the feminine divine because we need her now we're sure. being we're the male principle is destroying everything. So here's Washington, the apotheosis. Oh, how about the public courthouses? This is yeah. this is uh, Sonoma County, 1906, built in 1880. Sonoma County, two hours north of San Francisco, middle of nowhere. So here you see these elegant designs again, and these are public mm -hmm. houses, public buildings. Are you kidding me? Old city halls. What did they conduct in these old city halls, folks? These weren't forts. These weren't protection centers. And, and just deliver mail, I get into the Pony Express about, you know, the Pony Express, what Wells Fargo has all their, uh, you know, covered wagons showing how they delivered the mail. No, that was only for a year and a half. <laughs> it was 24 right. day run. It often took months for them to do the 20. And how, how did you get your mail? How did they get information saying, everybody come out to California, we're going to build these elegant railways and get all this stuff over and order all these parts to Washington and overseas to bring all these railways. How did they do that? How did they communicate? It's just, it's just massive. The lies are just massive. Post office buildings to, to, to move mail with right. horse and buggy. Yes. This is the official story, Charlie. This is what they're officially telling us is the reasons. New York. Oh, you have to, this book, 1880 New York. Just get that book and it'll, <laughs> mm -hmm. it'll destroy everything about what you ever thought about. What It was already there in 1880. There's That book is over 300 pages of illustrations of grandiose designs of New York in 1880. There, there's also a great website called Old New York. I think it's .org. Yep. Uh, which, it, you know, you can go block by block and you can see pictures of the old architecture. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, how many people lived back then, right? Yeah. Think about it. And all they show is horse and buggy. They always show, and they never show the skies because they had all the balloons up there. But again, notice the curbs are all, everything's clean. Why would they have, if they got horse and buggies like that and everybody's walking, why would they have curbs and cement walkways that wide? Doesn't, right. make, doesn't make any sense at all. And, and then look at these, you know, the, Met, the Metropolitan House, Madison Square Garden. I mean, these buildings were magnificent. I, I would love to go back in time. Wouldn't it be fun to go back there and, and see, um, see some of this stuff?